The Halting Common was the boulevard or the parking strip in front of our house and it used to be a big stretch of weeds and um, when we first moved into the house Rainy looked out the kitchen window at the big stretch of weeds and said we're going to turn that into a vegetable garden for everybody and I thought are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> are you nuts? I thought it was the most sensible thing to do with public land and what what we find has happened here is that um, people have people embraced the Haltane Common in ways we that were beyond our wildest dreams. Like that first year, something so magical happened here. And it, it bloomed in ways that we never dreamed. People were so hungry to see food, yeah. their food growing from the ground. People brought their children to see food growing in the ground. They brought their children to, to plant seeds, children who had mm. never planted seeds mm. before. Mm. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Junea Donaldson. I'm in an urban part of Victoria, BC, on Vancouver Island, at a place called the Haltane Common. It's Haltane Boulevard. And up here are these colorful signs saying, Welcome to the Haltane Common, a garden on public land for all to share. I am with the birth mothers of Haltane Common, Rennie Hopewell, Margo Johnston, thanks again for joining me, I should add, and friends of the common, yes? Right. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, thank you all for coming. Yes. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so tell me, birth mothers, what is the Halting Common and why did you get this started? Well, the Halting Common was the boulevard or the parking strip in front of our house and it used to be a big stretch of weeds. And um, when we first moved into the house, Rainy looked out the kitchen window at the big stretch of weeds and said, we're going to turn that into a vegetable garden for everybody. And I thought, are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> are you nuts? I thought it was the most sensible thing to do with public land. <laughs> is this really it considered public land? This, I mean, this is this held in trust by, for uh, the citizens by the Corporation of the City of Victoria. Mm. So we consider that it belongs to all of us. Well, in fact, it does belong to all of us. Okay. It's not just a fancy. All right. Yeah. So legally, this is legally. common land to be shared. Yes. There were 120 miles of public boulevard in Victoria alone. And for almost, well, certainly as long as most of us can remember, it's been used for pushing up grass and weeds. And occasionally a tree. For shade. And a tree. Yes. yes. Fruitless trees for the most part. True. Yeah. Nutless True. trees. And over the years, the um, nutless trees. Nutless trees. <laughs> no nuts on the trees. Nothing, I mean, nothing you can harvest. <laughs> uh, but over the years, the the the, um, the boulevards have started to be considered part of um, the corporation rather than what belongs to all of us. And the parks department, um, for many years, has not wanted people to grow things on the boulevard because of issues of liability and maintenance and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so to make this project happen we first chose to go ahead and then see what happened and then when the parks department um, came to talk to us we chose to invite them forward with us and so um, we engaged in a process with them and where we listened very carefully to what their concerns were and they listened to what our plans were and our concerns and we eventually came to agreement that we would they gave us a few guidelines and and we came to an agreement that we would go ahead and see how it went and that was three years ago and it's been well, amazing. Let me pause for a second because if other people want to turn their common land into something like you've done, what were the concerns or what did you come to in that agreement with the, 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 the city? Well, the first thing we learned um, was a very important something that we actually had not done, but which we always urge everyone to do, and that is always to, oftentimes um, in cities, the public utilities run underground on the boulevards. That's oh. one of the purposes oh, okay. of a boulevard. Is, um, they keep that relatively undeveloped so that if services need to be um, mended or repaired, they can, they can dig it Water, easily, sewer, all that kind of stuff. Okay. 
So and we did electric. not phone to find out where our services were. We looked across the street and saw them all over there. Ah. But that does, we learned that that does not mean that they are all over there. So the okay. most important thing for anyone to do in an urban setting, if they want to engage in any kind of gardening activity on their boulevard, is to contact their telephone company, their gas company, their water company, uh, their, and hydro their hydro company, company, company and find out whether there are any service lines buried on their boulevard and if there are that doesn't necessarily mean you can't garden it just means you might not want to dig as deeply as you would <laughs> if if, uh, the, if if all the services were on the other side uh -huh. of the street yeah. good so, to know it seems to me that one of the things you've done to in a sense is broaden that personal responsibility slash gain by inviting everyone to make this a publicly shared place. I mean, Grace, you come over and do things in the garden, yeah? And Grace's mom, Anne, you, mm -hmm. and Esther, and, and occasionally maybe Carolyn, you may do that in the future. So that you maybe have all of your com neighborhood, community, whatever, the block, mm -hmm. taking ownership. Is that, is that thinking too far, or is, what, what do you find um, has happened it, here? It's certainly not thinking too far. And what, what we find has happened here is that um, people have, people embraced the Haltane Common in ways we, that were beyond our wildest dreams. Like that first year, something so magical happened here. And it, it bloomed in ways that we never dreamed. People were so hungry to see food, yeah. their food growing from the ground. People brought their children to see food growing in the ground. They brought their children to, to plant seeds, children who had mm. never planted seeds mm. before. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and they had a very difficult time believing um, that anyone could harvest because um, as in the United States, here also public, uh, private property is deeply entrenched in our cultural ethics. So at first people believed that they couldn't harvest unless they had planted something or had come to a work party and they would say, oh no, I couldn't possibly because I didn't fill in the blank. And or we I'm would not say, hungry. Yeah, or I, oh no, I'm not hungry enough. You know, and we would say, no, this is like the blackberries on the sea walk. You know, you can, any, this is public land. It belongs to all of us. Anyone can harvest. And they would say, really? And by the end of that first summer, sometimes Margo and I would lurk at our kitchen window <laughs> and watch <laughs> Anne, Anne and Grace and maybe eight or ten other people harvesting for their suppers from this little piece of boulevard. And they'd yeah. be talking to each other about all kinds of things. Yeah. And Margo and I would be inside hugging each other and saying, it's working, it's working, it's working. It's working. It's working. It was so fun. And it felt it like little spies. <laughs> it became bigger than anything we had, we had dreamed of. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and I was just going to say that the other thing that happened is we were out here a lot that mm. first summer especially because we were planting and we were sheet mulching and we were talking to people because everybody wanted to know what we were doing. And we had thousands of conversations with people about food security, about locavorism, about traffic taming, about city repair, about uh, building community, anything that was important to us about, about the common, what does it mean, uh, what's a common and, and how do we fit into that. And, and, you know, it was just the most amazing vehicle for education and for um, people starting to um, get excited about taking back their neighborhood, their sense mm -hmm. of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned quite a few really interesting <laughs> terms, so I want to take that moment to say, what is a common, since you are halting common? Mm -hmm. Tell us, what is mm -hmm. the common? Well, the common is... Um, belonging equally to two or more and shared all alike and it is pertaining to the community as a whole in other words for the common good and what that really refers to is this is a vast um, network or web of life supporting energies on earth that have traditionally been held collectively for the common good and I'm talking about the energies of earth and air and fire and water and and um, light and dark and peace mm. and quiet and seeds and knowledge and herbal lore and medicinals and um, radio and microwaves and the gene pool and DNA 
and um, for the every, ancient trees and the tumbling <laughs> waters and we the have poetry, poetry. Yes. Yes. the wealth of the past and the hope of the future. <laughs> We laugh, except that it's so that true. It's true. It's true. It's true. And all of that is under assault. Mm -hmm. And we know it. All yeah. over Western civilization, we know it. All over the planet. And yeah. all over the world, I think we are on this cresting swell of yearning to reclaim something, you know? And the time has come. And, and this is just one little speck of that huge, huge yearning to return the, the wealth of Earth to all Earthlings. And I don't mean just humans, I mean everybody. That little green bug that was on Grace's thumb the just a moment bug. ago Belo yes. is, a, is an Earthling, just like I am. And it has a right to live and it has a right it to the life-sustaining energies of Earth. Yeah. It's gone now. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the question is, like, how, are we gonna, how are we going to get you the place that, yeah. that, you know, where we have the common back and where, where we look back on these times and think, wow, that was close, but we did it. Yeah. We made it. And what's going to change? And so um, the common for me is a little piece of that change. And I kind of have this idea of, of it as a seed. So here, the seed of the Haltain Common, the seed of Carolyn's Fig Tree Gardens, the seed of Esther's Permaculture Garden, the seed of Grace and Anne coming over to harvest from here and helping us do the work, and possibly one day even the shared chickens. <laughs> yeah. um, those are all seeds. Oh, yeah. yes. And the thousands of conversations that we've had are seeds, and the people that we've taught to plant who have never planted are seeds, and the children that have never seen food growing before are seeds and this is just one little plant mm -hmm. of seeds yeah. and then there are so many more and there are many more and there are many more and uh, the time is so fertile to you know if I push the metaphor the time the time is fertile and um, mm -hmm. what really this has done for me is give me hope that that the seeds are being planted and so I just keep hoping that enough seeds are being planted yes. and that things are starting to grow. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Come on, sorry. I totally thought there was a spot. It's okay. That's okay. Well, I like what you guys are doing here. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I bet that story is repeated all the time. All I mean, the you time. say you all say hello to everyone yeah. that comes by. We cannot yeah, be out here without no. without engaging in conversation, yeah. and it's just so lovely. Power and this, to the people. This yeah. year has this year has been the year of the so children. Year three years, right? Year now three. Yeah. The children have come in groves this year, and, and Grace is one of um, maybe a dozen children who came regularly Ooh. all all yeah. summer harvesting. You know, yeah. and Grace recognizes. Uh, you know, she can tell you what's growing, and oh she gosh, knows how to harvest that, potatoes. You know, and and, and yeah. Easy. And once the kids found that there was something in this garden growing, something growing, there was that there was licorice actually was the Ooh, there's licorice, licorice growing, growing in, in this here. garden, Ooh. and it's the fennel. Of course, you know? yeah. and they they, they came in droves and said, "Where's the licorice?" That's growing <laughs> in the garden? You know? yeah. And it was. And lovely. they learned the licorice does not come from the stores. Licorice starts in the plants. <laughs> yeah. With licorice yeah. root, actually. Oh, well, but fennel will do. It's close yeah. enough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And one day some little girls came and they were wearing little old fashioned sunbonnets and they had little baskets in their hands and they said, We're little old fashioned girls and we've come to harvest our lunch. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I said, oh, you've been reading more Ingalls Wilder, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What this is, is revolutionary, transformation. It's very subversive. Very subversive yeah. on yes. the most lovely level. Yes. I know. Yeah. I mean, after all those years yeah. of marching and writing letters and protesting <laughs> and doing everything I could to, you know, change the world. And here it is, it turns out to be growing vegetables on the boulevard that's the most revolutionary thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? I've been an activist for 50 years. I'm 60. I've been an activist since I was 10. And that it should be growing tomatoes. <laughs> would be the thing. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> okay. we're saving, Maybe. We're saving seeds. Maybe yeah. it's not mm -hmm. really crazy. You are, that, Maybe all the rest of this is crazy, crazy. Yeah. and yeah. you're bringing a bit of sanity yeah. and connection and yes. community. Yes. 
and yeah. wholeness yeah. That's the back. Cra- that's the crazy part, is that, it, is that this should be subversive instead of, well, this is just life. Yeah. You know, this is what we do and now that we're... Um, have discovered agriculture. Yeah, <laughs> we humans. Now and that, I think now the that key we're trying to put the culture back into agriculture. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Moving away from mm-hmm. agri yes. business. Yes. 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 Permaculture. Yes. 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 Yeah. With permaculture and, and little gardens like this and so on. Margo. Yeah. yeah. And well, two things. Oh, there's so many exciting many things to yeah. talk about. But I wanted to talk about community because we haven't done this by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a growing list of people who are interested in the common and who want to come and help when we have work parties um, or who come and harvest or um, participate in lots of different ways and some of the people who do that are sitting here right now and it's just um, to me that's even more important than the food and I've learned so much from this and and, um, I finally got it at our last work party when Grace was you were helping to um, dig potatoes and and Esther, I think you were here for a while and you were snapping the dead heads off things and people were doing things and it was all really relaxed and it was taking care of itself like a beautiful dance and Rainy and I were standing looking at the dance and I thought, wow, this is what happens when we get it right and when people know enough and feel comfortable enough and, and we've made enough invitation and we've stepped back enough out of the way so that this can people can do it so could we say um, if you plant it they will come yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Our, yes. They do. Our, and our actual goal is to become um, is to become obsolete at not in terms of we would have no participation on the common but that if anything were to happen to us that the common would go on without us wonderful no that's wonderful that would be the ultimate that the roots entrenchment of it in the neighborhood of your legacy yeah would be deep enough mm-hmm. that Anne and Esther and Grace and others that, that mm-hmm. are becoming part of this will carry it on I, I like that yeah. yeah now I noticed I, I think you mentioned that I saw a picture that you had the, the words on the sidewalk said you know the potatoes are ready to har- or something potatoes are ready to harvest help mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. <laughs> Do, and, and so, I mean, I, mean I, I can just imagine walking by this, you know, in a lovely garden, but an invitation to come in here and harvest, even if I've mm-hmm. never seen this before? Mm-hmm. Did people do that? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes they do. But it it takes a little work. At first we had to hand things to people. People would Mm -hmm. walk by and say, oh we love what you're doing, our beautiful garden, and we would say, great, this is your garden too, come and pick any time. And they'd say, oh I couldn't. And then we found that if we just reached down and picked something out of the garden and said, here, take this home if you'd like it. And then the next time they went by, they'd say, where was that thing that you gave me? Is there more of those? <laughs> and then by the third time, we didn't even, they didn't need us. They yeah. were just like, whatever. And that's kind of grown by osmosis. So now people just stop by and harvest. And also, there are more people using it now that actually need the food and don't have a place to, to mm. grow. So mm. we have a regular group of people who come by who we know are hung, really hungry. And this garden is available to them as much as it is to anybody else. But we realized this summer that there were less um, of our neighbors coming to harvest. And so we started to ask people when they were walking by, why aren't you harvesting this year? And it's because the Haltain Common has been a bit of a victim of its own success. They've all been inspired to go home and start gardens <laughs> in their yards or on their boulevards. Yes. Yes. Everybody that I asked about it said, because I'm growing food for myself now. Yes. Yes. It's a beneficial <laughs> contagion. <laughs> a beneficial con- yes. A beneficial contagion. Absolutely. Yeah. May it go viral. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And in fact, there's a, a food growing on the boulevard over there. There's food growing on the boulevard over there and down the street and down the street and down the street and around directions the around the corner and probably some backyards as well and in backyards yeah mm-hmm. absolutely yeah yeah what i mean the ripples i yeah. mean the growth yeah. effect of what you're doing yeah starting with we're, your also, we're also becoming very aware because we live on an island and it's a small island it's bigger than england but it's still a pretty small island but we have enough food stocks on vancouver island to, to feed humans only feed humans only not anybody else just us for three days if the food delivery system breaks down. And 96% of the food we consume on Vancouver Island is shipped or trucked 
over here to this island. Yeah. So then well, that begs the question, what are we going to do if we have some kind of global food disruption or an earthquake, which is imminent, we're being told, and uh, other people are genuinely concerned and they want to do something to take action about that. And what yeah. you guys are doing is an empowerment, is a personal mm. empowerment. Yeah. Yes. To yes. say, right, we want to take responsibility for producing more of our own food. Yeah. How do we do mm -hmm. that? Yeah. And we were also empowered by previous people who have done this. We're not yes. the first people to grow food on a boulevard or to grow mm -hmm. things on the boulevard. Um, lots of people have done that. It's just that we've done it on a very public road, not on a side street, um, in a very public way, deliberately to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So it's our vehicle for for what we mm -hmm. want to share. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's made it um, so well known and so effective. Um, but there are lots of people who have done this. And I think also we dropped that brilliant idea of yours <laughs> into the perfect moment yes. where everybody was starting to think about food security yes. and it just was exactly yes. the right time. It's a time whose I yeah. an idea whose time had come. Yeah. And the other piece of it, there's another piece that I think is very important and it, it segues on what you were saying, Carolyn, about um, what would happen if if we had the big one or, or you know, or if there were any way in which our food delivery systems were were um, were deterred, and that is that we are not right now a culture that, that shares food well. We have hungry people downtown. The face of, of hunger is very, very personal and very human here, and I don't see all of us taking food down there to them. And I think a time is coming when we are going to need to know how to share food equitably and ethically and respectfully and generously and kindly mm -hmm. and with love whatever there is to share it amongst all of us and I think the Haltane Common helps us learn how to share food because there have been debates about not taking the last one of this or you know the only yeah. scarcity was around the pumpkins for the children uh, because there weren't yeah. enough for everyone and we'll uh, never make that mistake again. You get this on video! Hey we've got a pumpkin! People have sure. shared very generously and that's partly because this neighborhood isn't intensely hungry you know, in other neighborhoods on the Wark Street Common, where that's that neighborhood is more hard hit by the economic troubles, woes, than we are. And there is some culture of scarcity there, where th some things are harvested before they're ripe, because they need, need they, they need to eat, yeah. whether it's ripe or not, you know. But we need to know how to do all of that. We need to know how to keep it there till it's ripe, and, and then still know that we will get our share, you know. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, I think beautiful, um, beautiful. a really great definition of food security, and a very simple one that everyone can remember, is making sure your neighbour is fed. Yeah. That's my definition yeah. of food security, because even though my garden is overflowing with fruits and vegetables year-round, I don't feel food secure unless I feel that all my neighbours are in the same situation. So, you know, I see my role, like, you know, you guys too, Rainey and Margot, is to uh, educate and help others to mm -hmm. grow and to share food with each other and build community at the same time. It's all good. It's, yeah. it's all good, isn't good. It? It's, it's great. It's all good. It's all it's good. good. And it's even good. if it weren't all that stuff, it's good food. Yeah, yeah. better. Sure. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's organic yeah. and it's grown using permaculture methods. Yeah. Yeah. So right. There you go. But I'll do the right thing. I, yeah. I really want to talk to Grace and Anne because I, I, Grace and we have Anne. about one minute and a half left yeah. and I want to say, What's it like for you having this garden here? Um, I like it. What do you do with it? Um, I pick stuff from it and I harvest. What have you harvested? What's your favorite food that you've loved to harvest? Um, peas and <laughs> strawberries. Ooh, do you eat the strawberries right then? <laughs> and Grace, you help plant the peas too, don't you? Did you help plant yes, them? Yes, she did. And the potatoes. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Do any of your friends come and do it with you? Yeah. And Anne, what's it like for you? Has that changed the conversation about food in your family? Yeah. Oh, it's great. I mean, I grew up with gardens and having fresh food available. And, um,. You know, living in the city with a smaller amount of land and stuff, it's, I really miss that. 
and I didn't realize how much I missed it until this was here and you know I have a small little garden area in my yard but it's my yard has got a lot of rock in it so I can't mm -hmm. I don't have the soil area as much and so this is wonderful and being able to just say to Grace so I'm gonna make some salad can you go across the street and get me lettuce and zucchini and whatever else and you do you run across the street yes and get she does. for dinner walk oh yeah. fabulous Esther, for you, what is that like for you as part of this com commons? It's um, the next step in what I've been doing off and on, Spring Ridge Commons in Fernwood, also with like a, a gravel pit or a parking mm -hmm. lot. And uh, about 15 years ago, I started helping turn, turn that into a permaculture, zero escaping food garden and just seeing the the change in this neighborhood it's very inspiring there's way more awareness and people mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. direct action to, mm -hmm. to grow food and yeah so and my grandson who's six he lives out in the highlands and I mean it's uh, he's on a 180 acre farm but whenever he comes into town he wants to come here <laughs> because he knows this is life. <laughs> this is, yeah. It strikes me that yeah. people feel the energy. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I gotta admit when we drove up and here's this gorgeous garden, obviously loved with signs and the whole works. It's like I could feel the, the juice, the energy, the attractiveness. I mean, just like honeybees. Yeah. This is yeah. where you want to be. Yeah. yeah. When it's such a paradigm shift, the first time I saw there was food growing in just around the corner on Garden Street, yeah. um, that some yeah. had planted food in the front garden. And the first time I mm. saw that, I just had to stop. I was shocked because it's such an unusual thing to see. It's such a simple little thing to move your food garden from the back to the front or to create a new one in the front. Yeah. But it's just something that we haven't really yes. seen before. So we need to get used to that. Yeah. And now there are front yard gardens, vegetable Every, gardens all over this yeah. neighborhood. And the Everywhere. juice is, you're right, mm -hmm. juice is a good word for it. Yep. There is such juice, <laughs> not only here, but in all the projects and all the people and all the awareness. And it, oh, I just feel like a, thirsty, thirsty person <laughs> sipping at the juice all the time when I come out here. This is where the juice is. <laughs> Do it in your front parking strip, backyard, balcony, anywhere you can get it, public lands, gardens, you know, you got the long list. These women have created transformation in their community. I hope you do too. This is Janaea Donaldson. You're watching Peak Moment TV. We are at Haltane Common, and these birth mothers of Haltane Common are creating the quiet gorilla revolution. Join them. Not so quiet. <laughs> Not so quiet. <laughs> <laughs>